China. Tell us more about being an entrepreneur. Okay, thank you, Frankie, for asking. Uh, to be honest, I'm still very fresh as an entrepreneur. I'm still trying to figure things out. Uh, but right now, I feel like to be a CEO of a company, you have to be the CEO of yourself first. The time management, the, the stress management, the tolerance for the ambiguity, and the ability to see the trees as well as the forest, and also that constant hunger for making things better, uh, and most importantly, the responsibility. I, I, it's just like all of a sudden, I feel like I'm responsible for so many, and I'm not alone anymore. It's I have to be responsible for the staffs, for the for uh, for the clients, for the stakeholders, and most importantly, for the society. I think uh, since I'm in, in the field of education, I aim to be a leader in the in the education field. Um, I want to carry the corporate social responsibility with me, and uh, to be a fearless entrepreneur that will carry this through. And who is taking care of the business while you're at Miss World? Uh, I asked. I actually asked my team for a one month uh, away, so that I, I think they're doing re really well. I make the plan ahead of time, and we communicate a lot. So I think we're fine. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they're fine. And good, good job on the planning, China. What accomplishment are you most proud of in your life and why? Uh, for me, it is a certificate. Uh, it's a certificate that honoring me the best teacher in China. Though it's not official or it's certified, it's just given by a student, an uh, eight-year-old student who is in rural areas in China. It's a handmade certificate and he gave me to me after the class. And for me, uh, I've been teaching for like eight years in, uh, in almost like 30 cities for around 20,000 students. Um, and I have all these proud moments that lead me to where I am and I am more eager to be a better educator in the, uh, in the future. Yeah. Thank you, China. Well, group number six, you have been excellent. Thank you so much for joining us in the Head to Head Challenge. Let's remind everyone how to vote because there are four ways. You can like the contestants' Miss World Facebook pages, like their content on Mobstar, vote for them on the Miss World website, or in China on Model Power Live. We're here from the Mangrove Tree Resort World in Sanya Bay, China. I'm Frankie Chenna. Thank you and goodbye. Chile, tell us more about why you chose to focus your attention on helping immigrants in your country. Decidí comenzar con los inmigrantes debido a que lo veo como una realidad mucho más cercana. Puedo ver como muchas chicas llegan a Chile sin dominar el idioma, teniendo que dejar atrás a sus familiares, a sus propios hijos y quise ver alguna forma de ayudarlos para que puedan salir de su situación entregándoles las herramientas que ellos necesitan y también contando con un equipo humano que de verdad los va a ayudar cuando ellos lo necesiten. Thank you, Chile. Chile, if you had the power, how would you change the world? Yo creo que para cambiar el mundo, primero necesitamos cambiarnos a nosotros mismos. Eh, para mí, el amor y el respeto son base fundamental para que todos podamos convivir y tenemos que aprender a, a conocernos, a, eh, a ver a través del otro y a entender que ante todo somos personas que tenemos diferentes realidades, contextos sociales, pero que eh, independiente de nuestra cultura, eh, conocernos es una gran maravilla. Todos tenemos algo muy lindo que aportar y necesitamos llegar más allá en otros. Thank you, Chile. Cook Islands, born in Israel and raised in seven countries. Tell us about this incredible journey. Well, I was indeed born in the Middle East and yes, raised in several countries, uh, including Cambodia, Croatia, Kenya, Israel, United States, New Zealand. <laughs> My father works for the United Nations uh, in the area of international security. So it was his work that took us abroad. Uh, moving around a lot meant that I had the unique opportunity to uh, embrace and uh, immerse myself in various different cultures from a very young age. And so I think that this is probably one of the most precious gifts that my parents could have given me, this opportunity to see the world and to embrace the world. And so my uh, international upbringing is very much a part of who I am today. If there's uh, anything that I could have taken from it. It's that, as you know, every country is unique and special and beautiful, uh, whether it be culturally or geographically, but fundamentally, we all have so much in common. Uh, love, family, compassion, 
hospitality, kindness. These are all things that emanate all over the world, no matter where you are. And so I was able to feel at home no matter where I was, much like I do here in Sanya, amongst all of you beautiful and inspiring young women. <laughs> Now, if I may ask, do you have a favorite place that you've been to or lived in? Honestly, that is probably the toughest question that I could answer. And I've been asked it many times because every country has something about it that, that uh, I'm constantly reminded of or I'm, I'm constantly yearning for. Uh, of course, I love my beloved Cook Islands, but I love everywhere that I've ever traveled to. I've, I've had the privilege of traveling to over 45 countries in my lifetime. And uh, everywhere I've been, I've kept something special with me. Thank you so much, Cook Island. Cook Islands, what is the most important issue your generation is facing? Well, mental health is of a major concern. We're finding that people are experiencing some of the highest levels of anxiety, stress, depression, low self-esteem than any generation before us. And there are a multitude of factors that are playing into it. Uh, education costs, costs of living, uh, job opportunities. And with such a huge reliance on social media, we're seeing its effects on self-image, this need to achieve physical perfectionism, uh, perceived wealth. But most importantly, within such an overworked and overstressed uh, generation, people are failing to practice self-care and they're neglecting to look after themselves. So this can be anything from physical exercise, spending time with your family, uh, eating healthy, getting enough sleep. It's different for everybody. But I believe that it's important that amidst our busy lives to just stop, take the time to look after our mental health because beyond our careers and beyond our finances, it's essentially our health and our happiness that's most important. Why do you want to be a detective? So becoming a detective was a really strange come about for me. Um, almost five years ago, my best friend committed suicide and because she was so young, um, the investigation took many years and it was opened and reclosed many times. So instead of getting frustrated and annoyed at the justice system, I became intrigued and interested to see why it was opened and reclosed and reopened again for so many years. Um, so that's why I became interested in becoming a detective, to see the reasoning behind it. So now not only can I sympathise with the families and people who have gone through what I have gone through, but also the other side of the table. So I can understand either way, and that's the reason behind my studies. Well, I can definitely see then why you want to be a detective. I think a lot of people want to know, what do you learn in your studies when you're doing crimes and investigation? So over the three year course, you do a base law throughout the three years. So it is a law degree. And the first year we took fingerprints and fibers from cars and we learn how to package things properly and you have to sign everything and things like that. So it is quite complicated, but it's very interesting and I'm really glad that I've chosen it to study. Okay, great. Well, thank you for giving us thank an insight you. into that field. Thank you. That, if you could have lunch with any person dead or alive, who would it be? If I could have lunch with anyone dead or alive, it would be Sarah, but I'd also bring my mum. Sarah was my best friend who I mentioned before, who sadly committed suicide almost five years ago. Um, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. So, so, so um, I'd really like to do that. Um, it's the fifth year on 8th of December, the night of the final. So this is all dedicated, sorry. This is all dedicated to her because um, I've just kind of thrown myself into something and try to achieve what I've always wanted to because she used to do that and she always taught me to just go for anything and she was so outgoing. So that's who I'd have lunch with. So thank you. Thank you, England. Guadalupe, tell us about the women in your life and why they are important to you. Yes, my mother, with whom I have a great complicity, comes from a family made up mostly of women. She's everything for, to me and uh, she always supports me in all my projects and wants to see me um, success in my life. 
I want to be like her with my future children. And my grandmother is a model to me, um, an active woman. Uh, even she's retired. Uh, he learned, she learned, sorry, uh, how to swim uh, about three years ago. Uh, it's an example of uh, it's never too late. She's swimming, hiking, um, dancing, uh, does um, yoga, and sometimes I think she's a uh, better sportive than me. <laughs> and yes, she is always connecting to the world uh, by being uh, very active on social media, and she doesn't lose any of her uh, grandchildren. And yes, we have always contact with her behind the, social, uh, the social media, sorry. <laughs> and how proud are they of you that you're here at Miss World? Very, very proud because um, I'm the first uh, woman in my family to uh, do some beauty pageants, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Guadalupe. You. Guadalupe, is there something you haven't done that you always wished you could do? Eh bien, j'ai toujours voulu faire du son, du saut en élastique avec mes amis puisque je suis une grande fan de sensations fortes et c'est l'occasion aussi de partager un moment avec eux, d'avoir des souvenirs qui resteront gravés à jamais et c'est l'occasion en fait de partager des valeurs telles que la solidarité, euh, la tolérance et, euh, et tout simplement le partage en fait. Partager des moments, c'est euh, essentiel je pense dans la vie pour euh, s'accomplir et se sentir bien en étant entouré des autres et des personnes qu'on aime. Thank you,